I want to thank the Center of Latin American Studies for giving me the opportunity to speak at the Wagner. It's uh, quite an honor to, to be doing this again at the Wagner. Um, so I'm just going to give you some very brief challenges, uh, health challenges faced by the uh, Chorti Mayas of Guatemala and Honduras. Um, the Chorti Mayas uh, exemplify what a lot of other indigenous groups in Latin America are, are facing. Um, I've been conducting research in this area since, well, for almost 30 years now, including um, during a cholera epidemic in which several of my neighbors died in 1992, famines, um, uh, but famine is actually chronic in this area, but it's uh, acute in, in certain years. And so I have been able to see uh, the health problems arising. Um, so I'm just going to list six key challenges, but this list is by far from comprehensive, just the ones that are the most striking. First of all, the Chortis are poor, like most indigenous Latin Americans. They have been dispossessed of their land, of their resources, and last but not least, their knowledge, um, uh, uh, cultural knowledge about uh, how to react to crises, how to organize, et cetera. Um, uh, they not only live off the land, but they also supplement what they grow by by low wage labor. For the Chorti Mayas, it's usually seasonal coffee picking, very low wage. We're talking five or six dollars a day, depending on how much they they manage to pick. Um, they poverty also means little infrastructure, um, few poor roads, um, poor communications. Um, poor, decrepit schools, um, lack of health posts almost entirely in their rural mountainous communities. They have to come to town, uh, which can be several hours walk or an hour or two pickup truck ride um, to get to. Um, so very weak state services on top of the infrastructure um, and weaker after um, the peace accords when neoliberal agreements were signed with international um, lenders. Um, it has essentially meant devolving or decentralizing state services has usually meant simply cutting them and leaving people to their own uh, to their own devices. There's coffee picking. There's a school uh, uh, meant for seven or meant for 30 where 70 students are crammed in. They're very susceptible to epidemics um, because of their malnutrition. Some, some uh, missionary groups consider all of the Chortis to be malnourished and treat them accordingly. The main cause of death of Chortis is respiratory illnesses, which doesn't bode well for coronavirus. Um, they have uh, the second major cause of death is di digestive tract infections. But really, it's a combination of all of those three that usually kills people. Violence actually comes in fourth. And as Dr. Dean will be talking about, uh, diabetes is, is, a, is a growing problem, not, among, not only in Peru, but in many indigenous groups because of changing diet and other things. Uh, another disadvantage is they have a lot of children, averaging about seven to eight births per woman that might be declining slightly. Um, but that creates lots of challenges when you're poor and trying to take care of a lot of little kids. Um, lack of physical and cultural access to health clinics and hospitals. So, you know, hospitals and clinics are far away, as I mentioned. Um, but there's a cultural access to Western medicine that they also don't have. They don't understand, they don't trust uh, for a lot of historical reasons. They are not respected um, by healthcare workers who often talk down to them and treat them like children um, and often blame them for their own um, health problems, even though it's their poverty, historically informed poverty that uh, has made them put them in this situation. So their lack of access to knowledge to the outside world um, leads them to rumors, conspiracy theories, not too dissimilar to what we see in this country when people don't have, uh, aren't accessing good information, good solid information. Um, 
they tend to treat local or global problems localistically. So if, so, if there's an epidemic disease, they wonder what they have done or, or what they have, have done that may, has made God or the gods angry. You know, so they take responsibility for any problems that happen, even when it's not theirs. Um, so those are all things that have to be addressed. Um, rivers and streams are drying um, because of for, because of clear cutting of forests, both by peasants by themselves and by mafias who are cutting the peaks. The Chortis always leave the peaks forest, but they're being cut for the timber, uh, which is very expensive by narco. Former narco trafficking groups are now in, who have now diversified, you might say, in their operations. Uh, what does this mean for health? People don't wash as much. They don't have as much access to water. Water um, streams are drying um, and water systems are drying. Water systems are all gravitational here. And so they come out of the top of the tubes leading out of the top of the mountains where there's still water down to their hamlets. And it's, that's drying up by getting water maybe an hour a day, two hours a day, maybe an hour every five days, which means you just have to limit the amount you wash your hands, you wash your face, you wash everything, all this stuff that you're supposed to do during a pandemic. And what water comes in is actually contaminated, contaminated by pesticides, contaminated by cows um, pasturing up in these mountains because rich people, once it's deforested, um, uh, range their cattle up above and that gets into the water system. Um, and finally, no autonomous unifying socio-political organization. There were forms of political organization that were revolved around religion in the past and during the colonial period and before, uh, but that has dissolved mostly because of the poverty and mostly because of attacks by uh, missionization, both um, Orthodox Catholic missionization in the 20th century and evangelical Protestant missionization. And now people are actually divided by religion, which inhibits organization. And so they have any organization, they depend on outsiders to do it, like myself or uh, nonprofits or, um, or corporations um, that are coming in and, and want them to do, produce, say, broccoli for the US market. Um, but it's always others that have to, that they trust and get them organized. Okay, thank you. I'll leave it to the next speaker.